Hi, this is Merv Barrett from Real Estate Connected, the creator of Easy Property Listings. And in this quick video, I want to show you what's new with our importer for WP All Import Pro. We've created a importer so that we can pre-configure all your Easy Property Listings fields and settings. And this importer is makes it really easy to import your listings into WordPress. Uh, so from this blog post, we're just going to jump over and grab a copy of the importer from GitHub following the link. Uh, once you're on the GitHub link here, which you'll notice, you'll be able to just download a zip file for the current beta version. And we'll be updating this frequently as we make changes. So I'm just going to drag that on my desktop. Uh, next, I'm going to visit my demo website, which I've got set up here called Training. And we're just going to install this plugin. So just visit Plugins. Add new. I've only got easy property listings at the moment, and this plugin I'll upload a plugin. So just choose upload plugin, choose the file, and from the desktop we'll be able to choose the plugin folder and install. I'm going to activate the plugin, and it'll give you a notification saying that you need WPL Import Pro. Uh, well, maybe not. Okay, maybe not in this version. We'll make that uh, happen. Uh, so we also need a copy of WPL Import Pro in order for this plugin to work. So I'm going to add new. I'm just going to get a copy of that from my computer for you, or that you will need to get a copy from WPL Import Pro. Um, I'm just going to put a copy of it here on my desktop and upload it again. Now we've had to make a change to WPL Import Pro, a record record.php file, uh, which is easy enough to modify. We're going to put a submission request to WPL Import Pro to see if they can add some additional hooks and filters uh, so that the plugin can skip image importing as long as the if the uh, mod time hasn't changed. Um, and it's quite easy to adjust, but there is something that you need to do in order for that to work, for the skipping image part to work. I'm just going to load that server up. So once you've installed WPL Import Pro, activate the plugin. So I've only got three or four plugins here. Um, yep, easy problem listening. We've got the import add-on here. We've got the, uh, I'm just going to deactivate the importer. We've got WPL Import Pro. And what we've done is inside the plugin, so if you unzip the, the plugin from GitHub onto your desktop, you'll see inside there are a couple of files. One of which is the template. So if you go to templates, you've got the rea xml.txt file. So we'll import that in there. And inside the includes folder, we've got the record record.php, which we're going to replace inside the WPL import pro plugin folder. Uh, so I've just logged into the website. I'm going to make sure I'm on the right server. Yep. Uh, so I'm just going to FTP in here into the my plugins folder. There's all my same plugins, as you can see, Akismet, so on. Uh, so WPL Import Pro. The instructions are on that blog post, but basically go to Models, Import, and you'll see record.php. It's about 155 kilobytes. So we're going to replace that file if you want to keep a backup just in case. Um, not that it's really needed, but call it back up. And we'll upload this new version. We just basically added two uh, hooks so that um, we can perform a, an extra check while importing, which will speed up imports. Um, I'm going to just get a copy of our XML file here for in uh, one of our sites that we use, just with 20 records. So we can just do a quick example of how how much faster it is, or once you've configured it. Um, so I'm just going to take my do a new import with this import. Okay, so I've imported that. Next, I'm going to add the templates. Otherwise, I'll have to come back to the steps. So just go to settings and choose a file here. Uh, so you basically can import or export templates. So we're going to choose to import a template. Again, that's that reaxml.txt file I've just added here. So I'm just going to open that up, import the template. Now when you go to create a new import, um, it just saves you time. Okay, let me show you a setting that is inside the new importer. Um, and if we go to extensions, you'll see there's a new setting for WP All Import Pro. Now what we've done is we've, we've created some hooks. That's why we had to modify the record file which these hooks will allow it to skip entries. So we're going to do a test import of 20 or so records. And then we're going to do that. We're going to enable the super fast import, which will skip records based on unique ID or mod time. Uh, so we're going to just go to new import. 
I'm just going to paste my URL in here. There's about 20, uh, 20 or so records. So this is a fresh import. None of these listings exist on this website now. Uh, so we're going to import these all in just as a trial. So once we put the URL in, download from a URL, uh, you want to create new properties. So in this particular case, because we're going after the residential node, uh, we're going to choose properties, continue to step two. And once on this screen, uh, the default always shows image. So if you ever run into error, that's just the way the importer detects the file. Uh, so scroll down until you find residential for this particular post type. Once you click on the right post type, you'll see that the content looks correct, like description, it will have some information there. Uh, so press continue to step three. Okay, so once you've, the, the new importer, uh, has the same title, images, custom fields, taxonomies, and other property options. Uh, but we've added this easy property listings custom fields. And with that, it's we're basically dynamically generating all the custom meta fields out of easy property listings uh, that will be added to this particular import. Now you're thinking, oh gosh, there's a quite a lot of stuff. Well, that's fine. Uh, that's why we've given you the REA XML import. Uh, but basically, if you were to create a new import and you wanted to get your, your information into here, basically drag and drop. So find what you want. So let's say headline. Uh, so we've got heading. Let's say this is a Jupix format, which we're working on now. But if it's another particular format or a CSV file uh, and you want to pull in your information, so office ID. So in this particular case, we've got uh, agent ID and this that's what it's called in REA XML uh, we've got the listing agent so we're going to choose their you know listing agent his name and so on and so forth if there's a second one and you carry on like that uh, but with our handy import script that we've we've provided there uh, go down the very bottom and choose load template make sure you've added the templates from settings uh, go to load template and choose EPL import script and that will pre-populate all these fields uh, with the correct values so we've got a little function happening here to format the address correctly based on sub number uh, description it's standard there we've got images where we've basically got two uh, import functions here for images that are required in order to do this and we've actually added support for both the uh, my desktop style format which is images image node or some of the other REA uh, Rex formats have objects so they instead of using the images you can just use the single function it'll do both and you can even do a preview test and make sure the images are all there. So yep, that's all come through nicely. Uh, so we're going to choose, we're going to leave that alone, close the images, uh, choose, if you have a look here with the easy property listings custom field section, you're going to find that they're all populated for you, all pre-populated. I've missed a couple more to do with commercial and business. Um, and there's a couple blank ones. Uh, for instance, we've We've added a, a few hidden fields or haven't labeled them correctly. So they've come through blank here, but don't worry, it's not a bug. Uh, we'll just have to update easy property listings to better support the importer. Uh, but if you right click and inspect a blank entry, for example, uh, in your Google Chrome browser, you'll be able to get the, the ID or the, the property, um, the name of the field. Uh, so you'll see here it's a uh, High agent hide author box. So our plugin's adding a WP import add on property agent hide author box. Uh, so that's one of the fields there. So if you wanted to hide the author box on all your listings, you could just choose type in no or yes. Um, again, so we're just pulling them in. So I'll, I'll, I'll skip part past this because uh, there's a lot of fields um, and custom fields. So now these are blank, but if you had any custom fields you wanted to add uh, that you might use advanced custom fields to, they sh you can you'll be able to populate them here. Uh, taxonomies, these are all set settings are preset, should be good to go. Um, the date, so our first date from our FeedSync software. And that's it. So I'm just going to choose continue. I'm going to import these records. It'll take a while because I've got to import about uh, 20, 20 listings and some of those have multiple images. As you can see, this first record has a dozen or 15, 20 images. Um, but the difference here is that we're now using unique ID. So we're not using unique ID plus mod time. We're just using the straight unique ID. So this is going to be better for your URLs um, and hopefully faster for importing. Uh, with the advanced settings, um, I'm just going to leave it to 10. Our server can handle that. And again, you can give it a friendly name. So I'm just going to run the import and press confirm and run import. And then we'll run through the update process for how you need to set the, the importer so that you can import listings frequently. Okay, so that import 
happened pretty quickly. Um, it imported the 20 records, and if we visit property, we'll be able to see those uh, 20 or so records that have been imported. That's fine. So next, what happens is, that's the first step. So now you've pulled in your first lot of listings. Now the, the, what happens is when we're using REA XML and FeedSync, we have a mod time, mod date, and some image mod time and mod date. Basically, we can um, we want to re-import all the listings again without touching, but have the images update if they need updating, or have the listings update if they need updating. So in this particular case, we're going to go to our import settings, and we're going to adjust this. So we're going to choose update all data. We need to leave this because we can now go the unique ID only, or before we had the unique ID in mod time. Um, so now we want to create new posts, correct, delete posts if they're not present, that's okay. Uh, update existing posts and update all data. So we're going to save that import configuration. Now if we do this, it will actually update all the images again. It'll update all the data. But what we want to do is go to our settings, choose extensions, easy property listings extensions, and we're going to enable our skip record based. So we're now ready to run this thing every day. We're just going to leave it. So we're going to choose save. Now I'm going to go to manage imports again, and we're going to run this import. And basically, it's going to check the unique ID, the mod time each time it does an import. And if it hasn't changed, it's going to skip it. So we have 20 records there, and it's just updated 20 in, in five seconds. Um, now, that's cool. Now, what we want to do is what we've done is made some changes so that if there is image changes or date changes, it will update. Now, in order to test that, I need to do some cleverness. And to do that, I need a file, because I've pulled a dynamic XML file from the web, uh, which won't be updated right now, but I'm just going to save this that file as a feed sync. OK, so I've got a test file, an XML file here. I'm just going to quickly open it up in the wrong program. <laughs> open with. And we're going to make some date changes so we can see what happens. <clears throat> First of all, I need to upload this file so we can edit it and make a few tweaks as we go. Uh, so he's going to right there's a the file. Uh, so that's the file we're going to use. We, we were using a dynamic one. So what we'll do is we're going to update the URL of this particular job. So I'm going to go manage imports, import settings, and change the URL here and update. Now because nothing's changed when I re-import, even though I've changed the file location and everything, if I run the import it should run just as fast because it's skipping all the, nothing's changed, the exact same file. Done. Now what I want to do is, so let's say we've edited uh, the first entry inside this, you know, the first change, a change has come through. Uh, so we're going to look at the first entry here. I'm going to make it, let's make it this year. We're going to just change that to mod time then. And we're going to run again. So if I go to run the import, even with the default settings, everything's like it's running every day. So I'm going to run that. OK, so it's updated one. <clears throat> but what we've done is we've made it skip images. So if we have a look at this entry now in Bayside, I go to property. And let's search for Bayside. We should still have all the images attached, even though nothing was done to the images. So if I edit this listing, um, and that's correct. So if I choose my Add Media, there should be a whole pile of images uploaded to that particular entry. Correct. Now, what we've done is we've we've done our best um, in this particular case. This this XML format. You'll see the mod time here of 2014. Um, so this is the mod time we're using when checking for images. Um, so we've set, we've got one mod time here. So it's basically it's said, okay, update all the data because we don't know what's changed. Someone's changed the price, they've changed the phone numbers. So it's updated all the the, the meta field data. And let's say, you know, let's and then, but it, it skipped the images because this this particular mod date, which we're also saving, is a new field, um, did not update. So let's make this 2015, and basically, it will update all the images again. But thankfully, it'll only do that once in a while, only if the actual images change. So even if you're, the users are changing the price and the the text and so on, but they're not touching their images, it'll skip the images. So the import's going to be much faster, especially when you have a few hundred listings.
and lots of changes made to them. So I'm just going to run that import again. So I've made a date change. Did I actually save the file? I made a date change uh, to the image mod time. But what happens with the REXML? Because this hasn't changed either. So if I to do a, a proper test, let's make this a seven. And so now the it's going to everything's changed. The image changed, and something in the content. I'll even change the price. So it was five ninety nine. Let's put uh, 800,000 or something to the price went up. I'm going to save that and run the import again. And it should update that one listing again, but it will also pull in all the images. OK, so we've just uh, adjusted the times of all the images. And I hope this works. Yep, so there we go. So it's re-importing all the images based on that mod time. Um, so, and if we run the import again, so I've changed, I've just changed something, and now I'm going to run it again, but I've changed nothing since the last run in this particular run, and it's it's done them all. So when you have four or five hundred records, it's going to be blazing fast. Um, and looking forward to getting some feedback on this particular extension. Uh, once it's ready, it'll be released on the WP uh, WordPress plugins directory. It'll be another free plugin that we provide. Uh, just want to get as many users using easy property listings as we can. Uh, look forward to helping you and hearing your feedback. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.